Simon Timms. I'm Eric Fleming. And this is another episode of Function Junction. So in today's episode, we're going to take a look at sending email from a function. Uh, so the first thing to think about about sending email is that it's always way harder than you expect it to be. <laughs> uh, back in the day, all you needed was like an open mail relay and you could just like tell that into a mail server and send email. Uh, and if you haven't done that, you should still try it out because it's kind of fun to do. But then spam has got a hold of everything and now spam is a huge problem and there are a number of mitigating techniques around it involving signing domains and things like that that make sending email, uh, I guess, less reliable uh, if you're just sending it from Telnet and uh, put a whole bunch of other requirements in front of it. Uh, so that's a bit of a pain, but fortunately, there are tools like uh, SendGrid and Postmark uh, that allow sending emails for you. So one of the, the differences between the services available on Azure and the services available on AWS is that AWS have a built-in tool to send email and Azure just have a friendly relationship with SendGrid, which is fine. Um, so let's take a look at how to send an email. Okay. So, so, so is send, so, sorry, is SendGrid, uh, so you're just saying SendGrid is not part of, like Microsoft, they are just a partner of Microsoft? Yeah, as, as far as I know, unless Microsoft has bought them, I missed it, but I'm pretty sure they're just a, like a third party that just happens to have been very friendly with, I don't know, the right person uh, to gotcha. end up more integrated than other providers. Gotcha, okay. Uh, so what I've got here is um, a simple function that's going to send an email. So I'm going to read off of a service bus queue, and I'm going to send an email. Uh, so it's, it's fairly simple. First thing we need to do is get the API key, and this is from the settings. So I have an API key here in local settings, uh, and I'm going to read that in. I'm going to read the, the from address from the settings as well. Uh, the, the to address is destination, so we'll set that here. Uh, we're going to just log this out that we're going to send the output. Uh, we set up a new send grid client using our API key. We set up an email address that's going to be from. We're going to pull the subject from the message. Uh, and then we're going to set the, the content of the message. So the, the send grid API wants a plain text version and an HTML version of your email. Uh, nice. In my case, it's the same thing both times so uh, doesn't really matter all that much I don't think uh, if I just pass in the same thing uh, and then there's this handy dandy little mail helper function here that you just pass it all the properties that you want to send and away you go you just wait the, the client to send and Bob's your uncle so this awesome. is this is pretty simple but hold on to your hats it gets <laughs> simpler folks Oh, so I'm just going to change branches here, which I've never done from Visual Studio before. So let's see how that works. Hey, it worked out okay. All right, so there is a send grid output binding in Azure Functions, Ooh. which makes this even simpler. Uh, so what we've done here is we've added uh, a send grid message as an output parameter to our function, and we're going to annotate it with send grid and give it the, the name of the API key, which is again pulled from local settings when I'm running mm -hmm. locally and from the, the actual settings itself when we're running in production, actually out on the cloud. Uh, and then the rest of the function is pretty similar to what we were doing before. We're going to grab a from address, uh, I'm going to deserialize the, the message. Uh, and we'll, we'll log it out, and then we just basically build up the message that we want. And then at the end of the function, that's it. It just automatically gets set as an output parameter and it gets picked up by SendGrid somewhere magically in the back end and you end up getting an email. So is there any additional like configuration for the the SendGrid side though, like in the in the app service or the, the app plan, like if this was live in production? Nope. Uh, all you need is the API key. So obviously there's some setup that you need to do inside of SendGrid itself. Right. So you need to set up things like um, your domain and a bunch of like signing keys and those sorts of things mm -hmm. inside of SendGrid, but that's no different than how you do this in any other way. 
right? And then it just uses the API key, and those those bindings are just make things incredibly easy. Yeah. So the only, the only trick is um, oh, I'll just unload this project here, so we can take a look at the file. Uh, so the only trick was that you needed to install Microsoft at Azure dot web jobs at extensions at SendGrid in order to, to, get mm -hmm. to actually have that output binding. Right. Uh, and that was like, just remembering to do that was the hardest thing. Uh, and I, <laughs> I don't even think I need the SendGrid in here anymore. Uh, it's probably included in the extension. Yeah. So, or some transitive dependency of the, of it. Right. Uh, we could take a look maybe and see what the dependencies are in here. Yeah, so it actually has that dependency yeah. built into it, so you don't have to be explicit in doing that. Very cool. Yeah, and that's it. That's how you send an email. Awesome. That's uh, extremely simple to do. Yeah, I do think so. Awesome. Okay, cool. So uh, we'll see everybody on the next episode of Function Junction. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. We read all of them. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye.